Are you someone who has just inherited, discovered, or compiled through research your family genealogy? Do you have a multitude of cardboard boxes in all shapes and sizes, documents, photographs, newspaper clippings, and or computerized records about your family? Should you preserve the records? How do you properly care for and store them? The Mission Community Archives welcomes you to sit back and watch this brief introductory video to find out answers to these important questions. Your archives have great value, not just for present day and future generations of your family, but also to the community of which they are a part. The information in your family archives can provide invaluable insight into your ancestors, including how their world affected who they were, what was important to them, how they lived, and much more, facilitating a greater understanding about who you are. Moreover, your family archives are the cornerstone of the community's collective memory. Whether or not members of your family were prominent, they have contributed to the heritage of a certain place and time. They provide narratives that combined with others create a sense of community. For example, letters exchanged between members of the family may reveal more what life was like where they lived than any published source, and letters written during wartime may provide both personal insights and opinions that are invaluable for understanding historical events and their impact locally, nationally, and internationally. A photograph of your great-grandmother driving the car on a family outing may interest a student of gender studies, or the clothing of family members, a costume designer, as well as your children. There are endless possibilities for the use of your family records. The best way to physically care for your family archives is through preventative conservation. This involves learning how to minimize handling, choose appropriate storage enclosures, create a stable environment, implement a vital records protection plan, and establish a succession plan. Let's take a brief look at how to get started caring for your family archives. The primary purposes of preventative conservation are one, to reduce the risks of damage to records, and two, to slow down the rate of their deterioration. To mitigate damage or accelerate a deterioration through mishandling, you need to follow some preliminary basic rules to protect your family archives. Have a clean, clear, flat space prepared to place the originals before you get them out. Wash hands with soap and thoroughly dry before handling paper records. They can be handled without gloves because clean hands will not stain the paper. Keep items flat and use caution when unfolding items. Use two hands to unfold one crease at a time and if the item is printed, the perpendicular creases can be supported with small weights. Handle photographs, negatives, and slides around the edges wearing either cotton or nitrile gloves. This is because fingerprints can make permanent marks. Use small weights to anchor unrolled items and ideally store your paper records unfolded and flat if possible. Research and adhere to the specific and long-term preservation needs of the physical format or manner in which the information is recorded. Just as important as knowing what to do is knowing what not to do. Avoid applying lotion or hand sanitizer before handling records as it can stain them. Avoid eating, drinking, or smoking while handling records. Avoid holding items in your hands to look at them and bending unnecessarily. Avoid picking up items or turning pages using the corners. Avoid writing directly on records, and if needed, use only a pencil. Do not use metal paper clips, elastic bands, adhesive tape, or permanent glue on records. And above all, Never do anything that cannot be reversed. The lifespan of your family's archives can be significantly improved by creating a stable environment that protects against damage or loss caused by light, temperature, relative humidity, water, pollutants, and biological agents such as infestation by mold spores, insects, and rodents. The reality is that not everyone can have the perfect climate in their homes for storing their family archives. However, 
You can try by adhering to some basic guidelines when organizing your dedicated storage space. Avoid storing material in the garage, attic, or basement where heat and humidity can fluctuate widely. Store records in the coolest part of the house, preferably where the temperature is between 35 and 65 Fahrenheit. The colder, the better. Be sure the storage area has a steady temperature and does not fluctuate by more than 5 degrees. Store records where the humidity is between 30 and 50%. Keeping records as close to the 30% humidity is preferred to slow the deterioration rate of documents. Avoid storing material along the outer walls of your house, which are more subject to temperature fluctuations. Avoid storing material near any sources of heat. Avoid storing material near or below water sources, including overhead plumbing pipes. Keep materials at least four inches off the floor to reduce risk of damage from water. Use blinds and curtains and keep lights off to reduce fading and damage from light exposure. And dust and vacuum regularly to discourage pests. Storing your family archives in appropriate storage enclosures is a very important part of preventative conservation. Not just any type will do the job. In order to be acceptable for preserving archival records, an enclosure must offer sufficient physical support for the specific material being housed. For example, the size and shape of envelopes, folders, and or boxes should match those of the items being stored. Be free of harmful components that may accelerate an item's deterioration. For example, plastic enclosures must be chemically stable, like polyester, polyethylene, or polypropylene. Permit the removal of the item being stored without risk of damaging it. For example, an electrostatic charge can build up on polyester film, causing particles to lift off the paper. Therefore, plastic enclosures are unsuitable for storing media such as charcoal, chalk, pastel, or soft pencil. Some quick tips and other valuable information to assist you with choosing the appropriate enclosures meeting archival standards can be found on the Northeast Document Conservation Center website which will be further referenced in a subsequent slide. The most important thing to remember is to educate yourself on the specific storage needs of the materials in your family archives. The enclosures not only need to be of archival quality, but also meet the specific physical requirements of the item you are storing. This will help to ensure you choose the right one. Even with your most diligent efforts, things can go wrong, such as a burst water pipe, electrical power surges or spikes, a fire, an infestation by vermin or paper-eating insects, and more. Caring for your family archives, therefore, should include a plan to protect your vital records, including birth, marriage, and death certificates, wills and other estate planning documents, deeds and titles for properties, and historically important family documents. The first step is to identify these records, both hard copy and electronic, and duplicate them ideally on at least two different storage media. The originals should then be stored together in a storage container that in the event of an emergency, you can easily grab and get to safety if possible. To avoid the records being subject to the same emergency, the duplicates of the records need to be stored in alternate locations such as a safety deposit box at a bank and or with family relatives. The important thing to remember is to build in a migration plan if you are duplicating electronic records. At this time, no single storage format is guaranteed to ensure the long-term integrity of your files. A suggested source to guide you is a short video by the Library of Congress as a part of their digital preservation video series. Titled, why digital preservation is important for you. The seven minute video provides some practical guidelines. Usually at least one family member is genuinely interested in preserving the family's archives. If that is the case for you, be sure to make arrangements with that individual to take guardianship of the records. An important part of this will be to include written information on how to care for them. Remember, the transmission of the knowledge you have gained while caring for the family archives is an integral part of their long-term preservation. If there is no family member available or wishing to retain the records, a viable long-term preservation option 
is to arrange to donate them to your local archives. You can start by contacting the archivist. If your family records are deemed appropriate for an archives collection, and you agree to donate those materials either by installments or upon your death, you stand to benefit in a number of ways. An archives can provide the materials with environmentally controlled, secure storage space, and can oversee their proper handling and use in accordance with archival standards. Equally important, the archives can provide research access to your family records, including present and future generations of your family and others. In future years, researchers, including genealogists, educators, journalists, and many others may also find your records both interesting and of value to their work. The internet is inundated with resources on how to manage and preserve your family records. Whether or not that information is reliable, up-to-date, and unbiased is really the big question for anyone doing any kind of research on the web. To assist you in this endeavor, let's take a look at a few websites that do contain credible and accurate information that can assist you with caring for your family archives. One is the Canadian Conservation Institute, CCI. The CCI offers a broad range of services on the care of specific types of collections, as well as basic care guidelines. Of particular value to family archivists is their publication series titled CCI Notes. Dealing with a broad range of topics, the CCI Notes are intended for a broad audience, offering practical advice about issues and questions relating to the care, handling, and storage of cultural objects. Many CCI notes are illustrated and provide bibliographies as well as suggestions for contacting suppliers. Although some are dated, there are currently over 100 notes in this ever-expanding series written by CCI staff members. Examples of recent publications available online that will be of interest to those of you looking at converting analog records to a digital format are Technical Bulletin Issue 30, the Digitization of Audio Tapes, and Technical Bulletin Issue 31, the Digitization of VHS Videotapes. The Image Permanence Institute, IPI, in Rochester, New York is another great resource. IPI is a university-based research center in the College of Art and Design at Rochester Institute of Technology committed to supporting the preservation of cultural heritage collections in libraries, archives, and museums around the world. Although IPI educational resources are geared towards institutions, their web-based resources, some of which are shown here, provide valuable learning aids for you to advance your knowledge about the different types and formats of photographic records, including their inherent weaknesses and storage requirements for your family archives. The U.S.-based Northeast Document Conservation Center, NEDCC, is also a valuable resource for family archivists. Founded in 1973, the NEDCC was the first independent conservation laboratory in the United States to specialize exclusively in the conservation and preservation of paper and film-based collections. The NEDCC website differs from the previous ones profiled. In addition to the resources it has for libraries, archives, historical organizations, museums, and other repositories, the NEDCC includes information specifically to assist you in your work, free of the technical jargon. The webpage shown here contains key practical information about how to care for your family archives. The page also features three useful handouts you can download caring for private and family collections, guidelines for framing, and on caring for your family collections. Be sure to bookmark this page. A cardinal rule when caring for your family archives is never do anything that cannot be undone without harm to the object, aptly stated by author Althea Douglas. Therefore, any family records which require remedial action to stabilize or repair them should only be undertaken by a professionally trained conservator. This is especially important for legal documents, such as deeds and birth certificates, 
because great care is required to ensure their integrity and authenticity are kept intact. In these situations, your responsibility is to seek out an accredited professional. A useful resource to help you find one is through the website of the Canadian Association of Professional Conservators, CAPC, a nonprofit corporation established in 1971 with the primary aim of raising the standards of competence, integrity, and ethics in conservation in Canada. To accomplish this, the CAPC has established criteria for the accreditation of conservators and conservation scientists. Membership in the CAPC is voluntary, therefore it does not represent all qualified conservators working in Canada, but is a good place to start looking. A family's archives needs to be preserved and shared. Hopefully this introduction to preventative conservation measures and online resources will be useful in your quest to ensure your family knowledge, experiences, histories, and traditions are passed on from one generation to the next.